Nine out of ten people living in cities breathe polluted air every day. Please look around you. If you are breathing clean air, then that means that the people in your home, at your office, or right around you are breathing poison. I was born in Shanghai, a very polluted city. But at a very young age, fortunately, my parents moved me to a small German town. And that is why I got to spend my childhood in places that looked like this. Now I know how fortunate I've been. In 2011, I moved to Shanghai for an internship, and I was so shocked that I was immediately immersed in this. Now back then, I was still single, so I was trying to get in shape. I went, to, I went for runs outdoors, but I suddenly got sick. So... I'm sure you've seen the pictures. I started wearing my mask. I reduced my activities outdoors. I stayed inside, and it did get slightly better. But only when I moved back to Germany, I fully recovered. And that is where it hit me. It was the environment I was living in that caused it. Now, I got to escape, but my family, my grandma, my aunts, my cousin, who's like a little brother to me, they don't get to escape. At some point, it got so bad, the government issued warnings for children to stay at home and not go to school because the pollution levels were just so high. Now, according to research from the World Health Organization, 90% of all city dwellers breathe polluted air every day. Now, that means that air pollution is causing more than 8 million deaths prematurely. That's more than traffic accidents. And that is now even more than smoking. In the United States alone, the economic damage amounts to 131 billion US dollars year after year. At such cost, it's the invisibility making this global problem so dangerous. So where does air pollution come from? There are man-made sources like car traffic, power plants or construction sites, but there can also be natural sources like forest fires. And I know for a fact this is a huge problem in California. The American Lung Association charts that for the past 20 years where air pollution has been recorded, LA has ranked number one in 19 out of those for ozone pollution. For year-round particle pollution, for year -round particle pollution, it's still ranked at number five. And for short-term particle pollution, it's ranked at number seven. Again, it's the invisibility making this problem so dangerous. Because we breathe in those invisible particles. They get into our lungs, and from there into our bloodstream, maybe even into our brains. So fueled by the passion to solve this problem and to save my family, a few friends and I, we got together uh, six years ago, and we started discussing how to make life in cities more livable. And we all shared a similar experience, which I'm sure you've had as well. That while living in big concrete cities, Whenever we get to go out into nature, we immediately feel more relaxed and more happy. And at the same time, a university professor of ours, he was conducting some research on how plants can filter particulate matter. And while studying his research, we found nature's solution more than 400 million years old. The very same solution that has created the atmosphere on this planet allowing us to breathe. Our superhero, Mars. Now, Mars comes in a var variety of over 12,000 different species, and some of them have an antiseptic effect. But all of them, they share a fractal design, and that fractal design gives them the greatest cooling and filter capacity of all plant life on Earth. Additionally, Mars has a static charge, so that means that the, the, the negative ionic charge attracts the positive charge pollution particles. And that means that moss can clean the air from fine dust. But moss doesn't only catch the pollutants, it eats them and converts them into nutrition. So here you see a microscopic shot of that chemical process happening. What you can see are the pollution particles being digested and converted into biomass. But naturally, moss grows in shady and moist environments, not in the harsh, concrete, cramped, motorized jungle that we are living in now. And that is why in our first design, we created a space-saving, 
vertical moss wall to put in cities. And it looked like this one. So this is what we call the city tree. And we installed more than 50 of those units all across Europe. We placed a solar panel on top of it to harness renewable energy. And we implemented a water tank and an irrigation system to provide the plants with water. We did some good impact. And with all the projects all around Europe, we gathered experience. But that is when we hit problems. We didn't factor in the UV radiation bleaching out the moss. We didn't factor the proper water treatment plan. And we relied on natural airflow, so we didn't have a ventilation system inside of it. But that is when we put our heads together and we connected to people from different backgrounds. Architects, mechanical engineers, people who knew about irrigation, radiation, ventilation. And we copied what nature does. It harmonizes all the different aspects symbiotically to create the perfect solution. And when we came together like this, we stumbled upon the missing ingredient, Internet of Things or IoT technology. Now, with the help of IoT and the sensors, which are constantly connected, we're able to monitor the moss and simulate the perfect conditions for it to grow in. And now we are also literally able, with the ventilation system, to speed up or slow down the airflow. For example, in LA, during rush hours, the main pollutants come from traffic. So exhaust fumes, rubber tire wear, or brake, tire, brake wear. And I'm sure none of you want those ingested, right? Now we are able to slow down the airflow because those small particles, they take a longer time to deposit on the moss. So we give the moss the, the time to catch those pollutants and eat them. Outside of peak hours, the pollution could come from construction sites. So those particles are bigger. And that is when we speed up the airflow to catch those particles. And this is now our new design, the new version, which allows us to filter 80% of particulate matter of all sizes out of the air. That means we can filter the air for 7,000 people to breathe hour after hour. One of this, these units has the cooling capacity comparable to an AC with a much lower power consumption. And now we also added a hub for smart city technology. So we know now how to create clean air zones in cities, in public spaces like schools, like bus stations and plazas. But we're working on a solution to make it even more modular more scalable and more adaptable to bring it to your homes, into your offices, put it on the side of your apartment buildings. When we combine the agile wisdom of nature with an emerging technology, that is when we were able to come up with an integration to solve problems. And this is also how we put together our teams. We connected people from different backgrounds people from the automotive industry with a botanist, people who naturally would never have worked together. And ultimately, we have now grown to a size of over 30 people. I'm so proud of them because we are all working on innovations and solutions to grow clean air. All around the world, people are looking at biomimicry, so solutions inspired by nature as an approach to innovation. It's an approach to find sustainable solutions for the human challenges that we are facing. Solutions which rely on the time-tested pattern and strategy of Mother Nature. And now it's your turn. I invite you to go out, find different people from, the, from different backgrounds, connect and collaborate with them, because I believe this is the way we find sustainable solutions for a sustainable future. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.